we're getting ready to go. Um, we're leaving here. Today's Wednesday. We're leaving on Friday. We didn't get as much time to work on getting everything packed up out here today as we planned. Um, so tomorrow is pretty much a pack up day. And then we should be heading out of the mountains on Friday and into Fort Collins for a couple of days uh, to do the things we want to do, to hit all the places we want to go, have pizza at Totally 80s, um, a donut at Explorado, or something else amazing to take along. Maybe a slice of cake or something. Oh, Explorado is a 100% gluten-free, dairy-free uh, bakery in um, Fort Collins, right in Old Town. They just moved this spring and I've only been able to go there once. I've been here since April and I have only been able to go there once because for some reason I cannot get Andy to spend $4 on a gluten-free donut. But he'll spend $4 on a chocolate candy bar from a small batch chocolate place. Today is one of the days I hate the worst. The day before we move where we pack everything up. It seems like it takes forever because we have so much stuff. We're here for like an entire summer. All of our tools are outside. We've got wheelbarrows. We've got, you know, all kinds of stuff that's big, rakes, shovels, all that stuff that we have to find a place for. And we actually picked up a few things this summer that, um, well, you'll see them in later videos, but trying to find a place for them between the bus and the van has been kind of difficult. But we are taking the van with us this year. Last year we left it in Fort Collins. This year we are not leaving it in Colorado. I'm actually going to drive it all the way to Minnesota and then on to Tennessee. Um, Andy's done a little bit of work on it, so it won't be scary like it was when we when I drove it to or from Fort Collins to Dutch George this spring. But it's definitely going to be a slow trip both for gas mileage and because the van still seems a little bit uh, 1980s when you go over 60. And Connor accumulated a lot of stuff when he came this summer because he only came with that blue backpack. That's it. That blue backpack. That's what he came with. The pillows aren't Connor's. Um, he's going to sleep up here while we travel because we packed the den full of stuff. And he's driving back with us. He's not just going to straight ass haul it back to Minnesota. He's going to drive with us and stop when we stop and sleep in the bus and do that kind of stuff. Because we're going to spend a couple of days in Fort Collins, which is his favorite city. You know, he's actually thinking about moving out here uh, in the near future. Um, but like everything that's here, he either picked up at Aikens or um, somewhere in Granby or Grand Lake or Frasier at Wiley's, the game store. And he had Allison send him stuff too. He had Allison sent like two medium sized flat rate boxes full of stuff for him for when he was here. Like his Switch. <laughs> she sent his Nintendo Switch through the mail in a flat rate box. That made me a little nervous, but it got here fine. Good thing he's got a car to pack it all into, which is going to be done soon. He's got to run a couple errands for us, pick up some diesel for the rear diesel heater. Because um, it's cold up in the mountains. It was 34 this morning. Um, what is it right now? 64 right now. It was like 70 something today and beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But you know, 
it's cold. It's frosty in the morning, super frosty when we get up. And the water's gone down another like four or five feet today. It's absolutely crazy. I've, I don't think we've seen it this low since we've been here in May. This is the downside to a reservoir. When the water level fluctuates as frequently as it does, it does a lot of damage to the shoreline. A lot of damage to the shoreline. Before you ever leave this world alive I'll thank you for the things you did in my life If I ever leave this world alive I'll come back down and sit beside your feet tonight Wherever I am, you'll always be More than just a memory If I Will soon subside So in a word Don't shed a tear I'll be here When it all gets weird If I ever Leave this world Alive
We are headed out today. I've actually left the campground. I'm waiting for Andy. He had to lock up behind me. Connor's already run to town um, to pick up some beverages for himself and Andy. And uh, now we head to town. Get the dump station and fill up with water before we head out. And then we're heading out through Poudre Canyon down to Fort Collins. And we will be spending a couple of days in Fort Collins. Let's wait for Andy. I think that guy is kind of curious to see how Andy's going to get across the bridge because he just turned around behind him. And you maybe can't even see because I'm so zoomed in. This is, uh, this is the part that would make me a little bit nervous. He had a straightaway going in, but coming at it this way, ooh, oh, that makes me a little nervous. But you got to be able to get out if you can get in. And we got semis coming and going all summer long. That went smoothly through that little tight squeeze. Yeah, fairly a tight squeeze, especially with the corner before it like that. Well, the first time across it, I could go straight to it. To get across the bridge the first time, Andy had to come up the hill and come this way to get through the dam. And now he's got to go this way to take that left. Do you want me to get in front of you or are you just going to go? I'll let you get in front of me. There's a remote control airplane field right here. I think it's so cool. After spending seven months in the mountains, now I'm in Fort Collins and motorcycles and sirens and all kinds of noises in the background trying to do a voiceover and yeah, I'm uh, not used to having this many background noises.
Come on, right to the right. Even you guys. This will be our first night back really on the road. We're parked in the rest area. We spent the last two nights at a hotel in Fort Collins because we wanted to use the pool and the hot tub and the showers and we wanted to do some things in Fort Collins before we left Colorado. I don't know if you can hear any of the noise out my window or not. But after spending the last five months in complete silence, I think going back to sleep with noise like this is going to take some getting used to. We are at a rest area just uh, east of North Platte, Nebraska. Um, I just have to say something. I have a little bit of a gripe with rest areas. I don't know how well you can hear me with the bus running and trucks running all around me. Part of this, this, this is, this is, yeah. So when we, I, I had to go to the bathroom. I told Andy, hey, look, I see a sign for a rest area. Let's go, <laughs> two miles. He goes, okay, if it's, you know, not one of those little tiny truck only parallel parking ones, yeah, we'll stop. So it wasn't, and we stopped. And as you're driving off of the ramp, or sorry, as you're driving off the highway on the ramp, you see the sign that says trucks to the right or trucks and trailers to the right. But you cannot see because of where it's located the sign on beyond that that says cars and rvs to the left and then beyond that even it shows rvs to the left of the left and cars to the right of the left but when you can't see that until you're already in the truck ramp because the car ramp veers off after the sign it's kind of frustrating when you're coming in behind someone and you just can't see that sign and so you're like, okay, there's trucks and there's because there's no RVs parked over there. Hey kid, it can be, um, it can be frustrating. That was how we almost missed the um, Rend Lake, Illinois rest area parking site or RV parking site. The, if I hadn't looked ahead of time at the overhead map of the Ren Lake, Illinois rest area, I never would have seen it. And I didn't look ahead this time because I was just, hey, look, there's a rest area. I got to pee. Um, it makes me feel like every time that we go somewhere, I just want to sit down for like a day and do nothing but travel over the map on the overhead view and look for all the rest areas that have RV spaces. Driving a Prius usually comes with checking tire pressure before you do anything and we just have learned to check this one along the way because for some reason just like allison's car the left rear tire um it leaks and allison's prius does the exact same thing and andy said that um it's fairly common in priuses to go through tires fairly quickly and get a lot of flat tires at least from his experience on the mechanics end of things so we bought that little air pump tire pressure checker for um just for this actually and he got a flat tire in the city market parking lot in granby and i ended he had he called me and i ended up jumping in the van and bringing the air compressor down but i didn't realize he had not have the right end on it so i ended up having to uh st I, we drove down to a like a car quest i think or an auto advanced auto parts or something and picked that up Dicker to the spot. Okay. Yeah. Stickers really satisfying.
I'm ready. driven many things that have as crappy as visibility as this thing does in some ways although I gotta say I've driven a like a early 2000s Volkswagen Beetle those things are just one huge blind spot just one giant blind spot for that thing and the Prius the Prius has got a lot of blind spot too a lot of blind spot of this over the noise of the bus and the van but this tree is full of birds and that is all I can hear I'll walk back by Connor's and see if you can hear it oh they're in that one too but it's a little bit quieter by Connor's car I love it. I think it's so cool. As long as they don't like do an Alfred Hitchcock and attack. You can see, can you see the swarm over there?
I just think that's so cool. I just think it's so neat. As long as they don't Alfred Hitchcock me, I'm cool.